that wasn't the joke. <laughs> um, so how do you how do you uh, comfort a JavaScript bug? You console it. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, I got more of a laugh when I said I was going to tell a joke. <laughs> how is everyone? So I'm uh, Stephen Cooper. I'm also known as Developer Steve everywhere, including Weibo, which is blocked on this network. But yeah. Um, <laughs> and Weibo is Chinese Facebook for those who don't know. Um, I use it occasionally. It's, yeah, it's a good platform. Um, but I am developer advocate for PayPal and Braintree in the region, and I can come now and say I'm from Braintree, and everyone's going to go, no, because it's now launched here, but we'll get to that. Um, I am, of course, from PayPal, who are putting on the event. You may have heard of it. Small company, just starting out. No, just kidding. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm also from Braintree, which not all of you may have heard of. Um, so Braintree, basically the coolest integration ever, like 12 lines of code. Seriously, I do a demo on stage in a minute 20. Um, let you take PayPal and credit card all in one little interface. Wait, PayPal will be coming soon to the integration to Singapore, because it literally only just launched like two weeks ago. It's super, super new here. Um, it's still a cool integration. Um, in North America, we've also got uh, partnerships with to do Bitcoin, which eventually will come here. I've got no doubt it will. Um, and yeah, so basic gives users like totally really cool ways to pay. But did you want to see a demo? Because everyone I'm talking to is like, how do you do it? Did you want to see a live code demo? Yeah. Yes. All right. I was hoping you'd say that because I prepared one. <laughs> Here's one we prepared earlier. Wait, let me work out Can you this do it screen. I did. <laughs> You give me a few days. <laughs> um, I did think that. I was thinking I should have done, but it was last minute, so I could probably. It could be done. It could be done. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fiddle with it. Um, so this is the Braintree sandbox. Um, I've got no transactions in here because I just cleared my account to make sure it was all nice and fresh. Um, first thing I'm gonna do after I set up my account. Oh, thank you is go into my user and grab my API keys because that's the important part, API keys. Um, so I can grab the public key from here, I can grab my private key as well, and it'll even give me different languages that I can grab. So if I need integration, I can go right here, grab whatever you need. Not medial, but we'll get there. <laughs> um, so I've got a really basic, I'm do, gonna do use PHP and JavaScript. Don't hate me, it's PHP. Yeah, I'm gonna make. Are you gonna record it? Oh, the camera's ready. Yeah. Um, all these codes available on my GitHub too. GitHub.com/slash/developersteve. So please go get it, make it better, break it, do with it as what what you would want to do with it. Yeah. Um, and I'm available for questions. So if you guys have any questions after, please come talk to me. Uh, let me see if I can. Can I make that bigger? No, I can't. So basic folder I've got here, I've got the Braintree SDK, PHP SDK, I've got an index.html, and I've got a processing file. It's a really basic form. It looks basically, looks just like this. I did regionalize it a little bit. Can you spot what I did? Lawrence is gonna go, why did you do that? It says pay, the button, so really simple input field for an amount, and a button that says pay me la. Good thing. I did? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <la. laughs> um, so the for, the code itself, really basic HTML. Wait, let me make that bigger. There we go. That's better. Processing side, I'm just going to call it. Wow, that's really large in here. Uh, I'm just going to call in the uh, PHP SDK, of course. I set up my configuration variables that I've gotten from the sandbox, and I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is generate a token. What that looks like is I get this really, really long string. There it is, which I'm gonna copy. So I'm gonna come back to the to the form. I'm going to cheat and oops, I just undid my lar, but I'm gonna drop in the JavaScript UI. So this creates a drop-in UI, which we'll see in a second. Inside that, I'm going to attach the drop-in UI to a container, which is called Checkout. And then I'm going to drop that really, really long token that I just generated right in there. No one copy that down. <laughs> <laughs> Take all the screenshots. We're recording this, yeah? <laughs> and then I refresh the page. 
and there's a payment box. So what that token does, it basically authenticates me as that user, as that merchant, and basically starts encrypting right from that start that that form loads in. So now I can do my payment. No one copied down that credit card. It has a lot of sandbox limit. Uh, then I'm going to go to processing, take this back out. And now comes the fun transaction part. So I've got some basic debugging in there just so you can see it. Now I'm expecting two amounts to be two inputs to be posted over, an amount and then a payment method nonce. So the payment method nonce, I get back from Braintree once I hit submit. It sends all the all the details in that box over to Braintree servers, so no credit card is ever stored on your server or PCI. And then it sends it back this payment method nonce that attaches to the form in a hidden field. Did you get all that? All right, so 123.45, paying with credit card. I hit pay me, just make sure I save that form. And fingers crossed to the demo gods. Yes, it worked. So now if I go to my sandbox here, and go to dashboard, I should now see transaction for 123.45. That's it. First time I saw like I did that, I was like, wait, there's that's it? But yeah, that's it. That's literally it. Um, Ta da. Um, that was completely last minute because just because I was talking to a bunch of you and they were like, hey, what's brain trees? Yeah, so anyway, that's that's how it's done. Um, and it languages, so we literally just launched a new version of the website tonight. I don't even think Lawrence has seen this yet. It's new, brand new. Just come out. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can choose, really cool, you can choose your front end language. So you, can, you don't have to use JavaScript, you can use iOS, Android. Um, you can also customize that entire form, the drop in UI, you don't have to use that. Um, and all your back end languages as well. Um, and yeah, everything's documented on the side. I can answer questions and yeah, that's it. Anyway, now I'm going to do the talk. Um, yeah, so tonight I'm going to talk a bit about. back. Uh, Mongo, which I should have put a slide in for, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, so tonight I'm going to talk about Mongo, just how I've used it in the past. So previous to this, I'm a full stack dev. I've been working, um, and before being a developer, I was a uh, analyst. So I was working with Oracle, um, MS, SQL. Anyone worked with the MS, SQL before? My sympathies, just sorry. What do you think we hear the thing that bugged me the most is you can never do limit. It was like, well, I think you can now, kind of, but yeah, you'd have to bring back top and just, yeah, anyway, you know. Um, but yeah, that's basically what led me to Mongo was uh, I was working in digital agency world, which I don't know if any of you from digital agency, it's like sales rules the world. And literally that's where Mongo has basically saved me and why the title, why I've got the title tonight. Um, Digital agency world is a wonderful place. I liked the chaos, the organized chaos, I used to call it. But I was senior developer before this uh, at a few different agencies. Um, and sales ruled the world. Because small agencies, sales runs everything. Um, so they would always come back with these wonderful requirements of things, you know, making buttons different colors and you know, redesigning the world every time I'd, I'd have to redeploy an app. Um, Little social media agency where, where I first started using it, um, we started selling Facebook apps. This is back in 2011. Everyone remember Facebook apps when that was a thing? Um, so we sold our first one in 2011. It was like a sign up now or something. Um, and like literally me and the front end developer sort of threw it together in a few hours because digital agency. And we used MySQL, which is great. Yeah, did the job, got them off the ground. And then they came back and said, no, no, okay, now we want another one for this client. And then this client, and this client, and this client. Before we knew it, like we had all these, all these sort of things piling up. The poor MySQL database just could not cope. Um, so we had standard schema, like we just literally put up a table, had app ID equals, you know, an auto increment column, app title, some basic config, which was getting bigger every time we had a new version of the app come out. Because oh, now we need size, now we need image. Yeah, it was it was growing. And then for every app, there was a different set of requirements to store data. So you would get app one, table one, app two, table two, which is different to table one because it needs to do this stuff and then this stuff and this stuff, and it just grew. 
sales went nuts. <laughs> so started off with one app and before we knew it we had you know, 25 words or less, we had sign up now to win this, we had a whole plethora of apps that they were selling. So we ended up with that. Data everywhere. Um, which at some point you kind of stop and go, you know, hey, this isn't going to scale, like we're in trouble, it's going to start sinking. Of course, Mongo to the rescue. So I started poking around in NoSQL world, which is awesome because literally Mongo, you can throw anything you want at it. Like you, you create like a top level branch, you can start storing like huge amounts of, amounts of arrays. Um, and most languages love arrays. So literally, you know, take an array, dump it straight in, get data back from Facebook for the user, throw it straight in Mongo, you've got it there, you don't have to keep doing API calls, it's, it's great. Um, of course, there's normalization issues, but we'll get to that. Mongo server, so the times that I have had to set up a server to support Mongo and I do my own sysops because I like playing in my own playgrounds and I don't want to use shared hosting because that's someone else's playground. Um, yeah, you need a really good server to run Mongo. Like last time I set it up, I got it running on an AWS medium instance, um, but you could quite easily like scale that to large and like go really beefy. You could not run it on a small server, I've tried. Um, they are very resource hungry. They will chew memory like lollies, like they're literally candy. They will, um, they will literally need a really good server to run it on. The upshot is dynamic collection. Um, so yeah, literally you create a top level branch or uh, your branches become the schema. So in Facebook, uh, Facebook app example, what I was doing was I'd have a Facebook branch just in case we decided to branch out. Uh, branch out, that was a pun. Uh -huh. Um, branch out and uh, move into Twitter apps, which I actually did end up doing, and Instagram apps, which I also ended up doing. But it meant it, I could keep everything in its own little collection. So I could have a Facebook branch, I'd put config for the app that it was, it was using in the app side, um, and then I could do things like layouts. So if you, we had a dynamic draggable interface, so user could drag uh, a block in, resize it, all the variables from that, the X, Y, the, all the positioning, or the sizing, or the app, or the module configuration, all stored in Mongo, was, was amazing. Literally anything I threw at it, Mongo could, could come up and, and keep on kicking. So once a user actually interacted with one of the apps that we were building, again, I could store a very similar top level branch schema in a user record, transactional, whole other story, uh, we'll get to that. I have actually got a tra way to do transactions. You can do it, but you know we'll get to that. Um, so yeah, store of uh, in a Facebook branch app ID reference just to keep things nice and tidy, and then whatever data they generated. If they filled in their name and address and 25 words or less or whatever the game was, we could throw it in Mongo. It was all stored, somewhat normalized. Like we could do some basic uh, reporting across all the different variations, and then more customized reporting as we needed to. Then I moved on from there and ended up uh, working for Clemenger, which is a really sort of, uh, sort of big agency, it's sort of a well-known agency and agency world band. Um, but working for, uh, doing work with big name companies like Samsung, um, uh, Diageo. So Diageo is like the parent brand for a whole bunch of alcohol companies. Bullet Whiskey, they do, there's vodka companies, there's all different drinks companies. Um, so they wanted to have some type of way to track uh, again, social media, because it was, it was big back in, in these days. Well, that was a year ago. <laughs> industry moves fast. Um, but yeah, they, um, they wanted to track influencers in different industry types. So they wanted to have users that I could track through system that I ended up developing, um, and then find out whether they were saying positive, negative things about a brand, whether they were an advocate for the brand, so that we could identify users that they could approach and give free experiences to, or sort of help them promote promote the, the brand, promote the company. So what I started doing was watching profiling users and of course the best database to do that was Mongo. Uh, I needed something dynamic, I needed something I could throw transactional data into and then continually reanalyze that data. Knowing that I was dealing with sales that was going to come up with like every other change to the system every other week, storing data at a transactional level so that I could reanalyze the data on mass and then find out different things in different ways was the biggest win. So I could grab an entire user's public Facebook, I could grab Twitter, I could grab whatever whatever we wanted to watch and store in a similar way and then run like a sentiment API over the top. 
So basically I could grab user level granular data uh, transactionally per platform, be it a website, be it whatever social media, process that data in different ways. It could be that we were looking for particular sentiment words, particular um, tones of you know, sentence structure. Uh, we'd grab that data, run it through various APIs, various, uh, various other sy external systems, bring back some type of scoring or some type of uh, analytical reference and then normalize that data back to the client. So we could say, here's your top three you know, people that we, or users, social media users that you should target. Here's what you should do for them. Um, here's top 20, you maybe do a party for them. Like, we were able to use this data, all because of Mongo, we were able to store it, we were able to analyze it, we were able to report on it. Again, I kept it very simple. Um, I'm self-taught with a lot of this stuff, so this is just how I got it to work, but obviously it different, for different user cases, it, it may be different. Um, at the end of the day, I was in the seat, I had to make it work. It, it worked. Well, it worked while I was there. <laughs> um, but yeah, very, very similar structure. Um, so campaign brand, and then I'd grab social media feeds. Uh, I could have easily taken the, the brand campaign out and just had a Facebook branch and then dumped all that in, but I could have been watching different things for different brands for different reasons. Um, and I wanted to keep it super, super dynamic just because I like the challenge. And Mongo can do it. Um, so I wanted to tie it back to something e-commerce because well, I am the advocate for PayPal brain tree. I thought it'd be cool. Um, but yeah, transactional. <laughs> Funny it was mentioned earlier. Um, so I thought Uber, great example. Like They do a lot of data. I know they do a lot of data because they have some really good servers on the brain tree side of things. So Uber uses brain tree. For those that don't know, uh, Airbnb, GitHub, they all use brain tree. If it was me running, setting up their database, this is how I'd do it. So user collection, I'd have Uber car, because they have different experiences. They have helicopters now in New York. They have bikes in some places. Like there's, They're going to expand. Like It's inevitable. Keep things nice and simple. Have a main branch so you can build on it. Have a config. I'm going to store the Braintree token. So if I was putting with Braintree, you can store the one I did earlier. The example I did earlier was just a basic transaction. You can store credit card inside the Braintree vault. For those that have used Uber, first thing you do when you set your profile up, capture your credit card, then you set up your profile. When you do that, it stores it in the Braintree vault, you get a token back, and then whenever you need to transact against the user, you reference the token, trigger the transaction. User never has to put their credit card back in again unless it expires or they want to update it or otherwise, just transact against it. And then a branch for transactions. So. I just got in, did an Uber, transactions added, transactions added, transactions added. Um, you can do transactions in arrays, interacting with that, and as we were saying before, taking data back out is a whole other story. That gets a little bit tricky. Putting data into Mongo is extremely easy. Like getting rid of data from Mongo, that's a whole other thing. Um, that's kind of me. That's all I really had to say. But I'm open for questions. And I do like memes, so you can comment on my memes. <laughs> it never showed, right? Um, but yeah, any any questions? Hopefully that was somewhat useful. That was just how I've used it in the past, and yeah, kind of, it, it worked. It worked really well. I'd, I'd love to use it again. It's I don't think it suits every scenario. Those are just the scenarios I used it in. In some cases, you are going to use my skill just because it makes sense. Like you, you'll have it on the server you'll have a very light app, you won't have the need for the dynamic, you'll need the structure. The thing I don't think Mongo still does very well, and I've been using it for a while, since the early days, it doesn't do group buy, so you can't aggregate data easy. Um, I think it still struggles with that. I mean, you can do it, MapReduce, it's a thing, it doesn't really do it well. Um, otherwise, you, you group by in your code, so you bring back a whole chunk of data, then you sort of aggregate it and spit it out from there. So uh, <coughs> you're talking about using Mongo and AWS. Have yes. You, have you tried other like Mongo and some of these other. I've looked at those and I also used, originally set it up in uh, Rackspace under a, uh, a lamp stack. Previously under no, it wasn't a lamp stack. It was a um, Red Hat build. Um, but yeah, I've also used it under Ubuntu, and I've run some local instances and stuff. But yeah, I have looked at some of the pre-baked services. Um, I was t the type of senior developer, lead tech lead, that liked to build my own playgrounds because I had full control over all the things. 
But yeah, of course, that means also means waking up at 4 a.m. to fix servers and stuff. That's a whole other thing. But yeah, I have I've looked at some of the other. Those services are good, providing they scale with you. And the reason why I would I cho chose Mongo for my project is I needed something that would scale quickly if needed. Because you never know if something's going to take off, you know, take right off, and you're going to have millions of users. Of. I mean, that's as a developer, that's kind of my ideal scenario. It's like I build stuff for two users, but potentially two million. With the hope. <laughs> cool. Any questions? Other questions? No questions. Oh. Fine. Cats with lasers. Oh, we have one. <laughs> Um, sorry, what was that? Um, I like trying a whole bunch of different, like I've tried other databases as well. Um, I still, Mongo for large projects kind of makes sense if you need something dynamic. If you need something re really structured, that makes more sense as well. There are configurations where you, there are times when you're going to need a hybrid. So if you wanted to do reporting on uh, sort of Mongo data, you can run a process, store it all in Mongo, transport it all over to MySQL and have like a structured environment to play with it in. Um, you can do the reverse of that as well. I don't think you would, but you can do the reverse of that as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's always new technologies coming. Maybe someone will come up with like a semi-structured version of Mongo at some point in the future. That wouldn't really make sense, but they might. <laughs> Cats with lasers, right? <laughs> oh, it animated. I didn't think it was going to. Anyway, yay. Um, anyway, that's me. I'll be around. Yay. I have some stickers. Don't rate all my stickers. But I have some stickers, so come see me after. We'll get some stickers. Cool. Thank you.